They are the kings of the Australian outback. You've got to concentrate all the time. Some of the biggest trains in the world. If things go wrong with these things, well, he makes a big mess. On epic journeys through a hostile continent. I don't know what we're going to do. We we'll slow down and blow the horn. A nation depends on them. Oh, God, boys, get in it. And the teams that keep these metal monsters on the tracks. Hauling huge loads of food, freight and mineral riches across incredible distances. We are out in the middle of nowhere, that's for sure. Big trains, big country. Railroad Australia. A traffic jam splits a town in half. Crossing's going off. I don't know why. Giving veteran driver Bernie Baker. Oh, look at all those cars. A giant headache. Ali's training hard. Grade, are you? To pass her driver's test. But a failing train is making it tough. She's uh, playing hardball today. And what happens when the lights go out? As the night shift struggles to fix the tracks. I've had enough of this. In the small Tasmanian fishing port of Strawn, trainee steam engine driver Ali Hume is getting her vintage loco ready for a run into the wilds. Just checking the firebox, making sure that burner's nice and clean. It all looks pretty good. Today, Ali is the fireman. The all-important job of making sure the giant boiler generates the right amount of heat to provide enough steam to get the loco up the sharp grades that wind through the mountains. The line runs from the coastal town of Strawn, 40 kilometres inland, to the old mining outpost of Queenstown. Ali's just a few weeks out from her final driver's exams. Pretty exciting, um, nerve-wracking at the same time. You know that nervous excitement that you get? Yeah, that's pretty much me right now. If she passes, she gets a licence to thrill. The thousands of tourists who ride on this wild journey into the mountains each year. Through country that puts an old train and its driver to the test. Correct preparation is crucial. So we've got a fire in it now. Not too much smoke. Yeah, treat them gently, gently. Keeping the boiler primed and the steam pressure just right is a juggling act. And today's run is with a loco known for being a handful. I mean, you're looking at old uh, technology here, 1938. She's the youngest of the group. We call her the teenager. She can be a little bit rebellious sometimes. They've all got their own personalities because they don't run the same every day as much as we would like them to. Today, Ali will be sharing the cabin with her mentor, Troy Omani. At the last minute, they need to add a fourth carriage. Uh, passenger numbers are going up, so whack an extra one on. The train is now longer than they planned for. And heavier, by 15 tonnes. Happy Alex. Yeah, mate. They'll need all the power the 80-year-old loco can muster. But she's temperamental. And there's something wrong. Ali has noticed the loco is not pulling strongly. Normally this thing goes like a rocket. You're not going like a rocket today, though. The boiler pressure is dropping. Uh, it could be bad oil. It could be a hundred different things. So. Yes. Yeah.
they've lost all power. She's uh, playing hardball today. From Tasmania, three and a half thousand kilometres west, to the straightest, flattest railway line in the world. Not a bend to be seen for hundreds and hundreds of kilometres. Built a hundred years ago for trains to cross the immense Australian continent, east to west. Dotted along the line are some of the loneliest outposts on Earth. Tonight, the town of Rolina is preparing for its weekly visit from one of the world's most famous passenger trains. The Indian Pacific. On a four and a half thousand kilometre journey from Perth to Sydney, one of the longest train trips in the world. As the sun starts to set, 200 kilometres from Rawlinna, a track maintenance team led by Scott O'Brien is on the move. Transport on this line is worth an estimated $25 billion annually. If the trains are stopped, it would be easy for supermarkets and other businesses to run short of supplies. Passengers crossing the continent would be stranded. To make sure that doesn't happen, these maintenance squads travel hundreds of kilometres for days on end in extreme conditions, fixing danger spots on the line. Be between 45, 50 degrees for a good six, seven days straight. I've been out here and seen crows falling out the sky and because it's been that hot. To find the faults, Scott relies on track inspectors like Jamie Retallick. They patrol the rail each day. It's no man's land. Once you get out past the last cattle station, you, um, you're on your own. Riding the rails in specially modified trucks. Looking for trouble spots. It's wear and tear on the wing rail. Making sure they're well out of the way when trains come through at 110 kilometres an hour. You stand here, you got hit by a tie-down chain that was flinging on a train that comes through at 100 k's an hour, you'd be dead, I reckon. It'll take your head off, mate. No worries about it at all. Then at night, when there's less rail traffic, tamping crews move in to level the track. And welding teams, all making sure this vital track stays open. In Rawlinna, caretaker Greg Campbell is preparing the train station for the Indian Pacific's arrival. I'm not very busy now. Not as busy as what it might have been 20 years ago. Nowadays, Rawlinna is virtually a ghost town. Greg and a kangaroo shooter are its only residents. The Indian Pacific is stopping here to let passengers experience an evening in the outback. And importantly, pick up the mail for the handful of neighbouring pastoral properties. It's dark by the time Scott's team reach their work site. They've been called in to carry out important stress testing on the rails. Right, I might get the wheel and just measure the 22 metres. At the wrong tension, the heavy steel of the tracks can snap and derail a train. If there's any defects at all, minor defects in the rail, it'll pull them apart. As the crew roll their gear into position, in Rawlinna, fires welcome the train to the station. The famous Indian Pacific is just a light in the distance. Inside the comfort of the train, the passengers are unaware that in the darkness ahead, Scott and his small army of maintenance workers are toiling deep into the night to ensure their safety. From remote Western Australia, 2,200 kilometres east. The B61 Streamliner, made way back in 1952, with its distinctive bull nose front making it instantly recognisable. At over 60 years old, it's a veteran of the rails. But this loco 
isn't ready for retirement anytime soon. Hey, hey, hey. Look at that. There she is. Today, the B61 is booked for a round trip through the Eastern Wheat Belt to fill up 19 grain wagons. From Dubbo, about five hours east of Sydney, to a rail siding at Naramai, nearly 40 kilometres up the line. It's going to be reunited with its greatest admirer. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. The man who's going to be driving her, Bernie Baker. This morning, Bernie's company has a treat in store for him. Two years ago, they named the black and yellow B61 the Bernie Baker, in honour of his 34 years experience. B61, the Bernie Baker. Bloody hell. Bernie Baker hasn't yet driven the Bernie Baker. But this morning, the company's pairing them up for the wheat run. This will be the first time I've been on it since it's been named. Oh, we better jump up and start the old girl. <laughs> Let there be light. Bernie's driving partner is Anthony Kurse, who's new to the job, unlike Bernie and the Bernie Baker. It's something he's very passionate about. He loves his uh, streamliners. And it's a locomotive that he would have worked on early in his career, and uh, yeah, surprise, surprise, he's still running it. The grain terminal is only 40 kilometres up the line. You won't be able to wipe the grin off my face today. <laughs> ah, this is like heaven. <laughs> Just the sounds and the smells and, you know, brings back all these memories of days past. Best locomotive in the fleet. It should be a straightforward trip, but the town they're heading for is a busy rail hub. Bernie's been warned there are other trains about and to expect heavy traffic. There's a train that wants to come in and he's got to run around and fuel his logos. And yeah, with half a train in the loop, it's going to sort of bugger things up a little bit. In Tasmania, the West Coast Wilderness steam train pulling four carriage loads of passengers has lost power. She's uh, playing hardball today. As the fireman on board, it's trainee driver Ali's job to fix the problem. So we're just getting our boiler pressure back, getting a bit more water in. Got to give her a little bit of TLC. She's hoping recharging the old boiler will give them the power they need. Right, mate. New steam is generated. The loco finds an extra lease on life. Slowly at first, but gradually picking up speed. <laughs> Ali and Troy need to watch for signs of how the loco is running. Oh, I'm just looking at this smoke. Going out, coming out the stack. Don't want too much black smoke, too much black smoke. You've got too much fuel going through. You've got blue smoke, you haven't got enough fuel, too much air. Listening to what's going on. As the train hits the lower reaches of the rainforest, the track is more precarious. This is probably the sharpest curve on the railway, so it's about two and a half chain. Fairly sharp. See how close we get to this wall. Going over the iron bridge here, the only original bridge left. But it's not what's underneath her that's worrying Ali. It's what's in the trees above. We get spiders coming in off the, off the tree, and sometimes they get into your clothing and you've got to make sure that they don't go too far. They'll blow around your ears and down your neck and 
just the creature comforts of the job. <laughs> After its earlier rough running and unscheduled stop, the 80-year-old loco has been guzzling water to generate extra power. It'll need filling before they head into the most remote section of the line. Putting water in the tanks. We we'll always like to go out, leave each station with a full tank of water, just in case something happens between sections. There's no water access in between sections, so make sure it's nice and filled up before we head off. But when it's time to get going again, Troy runs into another problem. They have water, they have steam, but they're not moving. Oh, you bastard. The wheels are stuck. After a full night and day travelling virtually non-stop across the Nullarbor, the world-famous Indian Pacific has reached tiny Rawlina. Passengers will get to stretch their legs and sample an evening in the outback. Train manager Bruce Smith is first off. Yeah, Roger, 10 minutes, mate, we'll get a go. How are you, hey, Greg? Yeah, we've got some mailbags for you. They're over in the um, oh, red okay. box oh, for right. you. I'll go and grab them. The Indian Pacific is the only mail service available to people on nearby cattle and sheep stations. The mail must get through. It comes in by the sackful. Now I know how far the Christmas feels. For a once weekly pickup. While Bruce collects the mail, his staff set up for drinks and dinner under the stars. We're going to go out together, roast veg, roast potatoes and, or jacket potatoes and roast lamb. No rest for the wicked and for the poor old train manager. Everybody's out enjoying themselves. And what am I doing? Lug a mailbags around. 200 k's up the rails, Scott O'Brien's team are preparing for an important job, checking the tension of the tracks. Out here, there's extreme swings in temperature, and that can stress the track, putting rail traffic in danger. Oh, yeah, with the drop of temperature at night, it like, can be a beautiful day, 20, 30 degrees, and then at night it can drop down to like zero degrees, and the stress on the rail, if there's any defects at all, like minor defects in the rail, it'll pull them apart. Scott and his team will perform a stress test using special hydraulic gauges. But just as they're nearly set up, no lights. Their mobile lighting rig has failed. Which doesn't help when you're doing a night shift. The equipment's taken a hammering on the bush roads. And the lighting generator is refusing to restart. Just keeps conking out all the bloody time. No light means no work in this section. Scott's not happy. Yeah, well, every, everything's turned to shit, so uh, we've had a few dramas tonight. In central New South Wales, Bernie Baker is driving the old train his company named after him. Pretty cool. <laughs> On his way to pick up 1,000 tonnes of wheat. Next to him is trainee driver Anthony Kurse, a former radio presenter who's still getting the hang of his new career. Uh, so this is quite unique and a bit of a novelty to, to be riding on one of these old, um, old locos. On air was good. On the rails, even better. It's a different, different sound compared to what we used to. Usually the other locos that we, um, we operate are, are much newer and, um, yeah, I mean, they've got a lot more muffling on them, uh, on the exhaust system. So, yeah, this is, uh, this is a bit unique and different. Bernie and Anthony are already under pressure. At the yard they're heading for, a train that needs to refuel threatens to disrupt their loading operation. There's a train that wants to come in and he's got to run around and fuel his logos throwing them off a tight schedule. You can miss your departure time or miss your path. If you miss your path, then you're going to have to wait in line. And then 
there's this to deal with. So this is a, um, a, a staff and it goes into an intermediate instrument. So this actually, whilst we've got this staff, no other train can be in this section. So it gives us possession to, to occupy this section of track. It's clunky old world technology. Still used out this way to make sure trains don't run into each other. And it's the new boy Anthony who has the job of getting it to work. He's got his first staff in. I've asked for staff number four. And now needs to get the next one out. It can be a tricky job for a trained veteran. Even trickier for a rookie. Um, so these machines, it's just got to give me the release. Sometimes it takes a little while for it to come through, but you just got to keep trying until it'll give you the release. <sighs> the depot they're going to is just up the track. But without a new staff, the train is forbidden from going anywhere. Bernie's special day could be about to unravel. So, yeah, sometimes they take a little bit of juggling. At last, Anthony has the staff. They can head the final few kilometres up the track to the yard. They've lost time but Bernie is happy to be underway. <laughs> Until he sees this. Taking up one of the lines are a dozen track working machines. And up ahead, the other train he was warned about wanting to refuel. Too many trains, not enough tracks. So it was a busy day and you've got cotton trains and wheat trains uh floating about. Yeah, Narrow Mine's a busy place today. It's chaos. There's no room to manoeuvre into the siding to start loading the grain. They'll have to break their train up. They've got too many wagons that fit in the siding. Bugger. And to do that, new boy Anthony will have to wrestle with some more vintage technology. Levers that change the points. At the wheat storage shed, they're waiting to start loading. But until Anthony can get the old system to work, no one's going anywhere. In remote Western Australia, the famous Indian Pacific is ready to resume its 4,000 kilometre odyssey across the Australian continent. We're just waiting on uh, some confirmation of uh, the guests and then uh, we'll uh, lock up. OK, mate, not a problem. As they pull out of Rawlinna, passengers and staff are settling down for the night. But things aren't as restful down the track. Scott O'Brien's maintenance crew have been plunged into the dark. The mobile lighting rig isn't working. And they're hundreds of kilometres from their base. I've got one. Oh, well, we'll have to uh, leave it here. We've got a fitter coming past tomorrow. Their job of stress testing the track is to ensure the Indian Pacific and other trains on the line remain safe. But without proper lights, the work will be difficult. You might have to bring your truck around and shine a bit of light on here, Tony. Meanwhile, further up the line, another crew is also under pressure. A track X-ray machine has found a faulty weld in one of the track joints. A two-man team have been sent to replace a large section of the line. Rail defect here. Take it out of the defect in the rail. But first, they'll have to cut the damaged piece out using oxypropane cutting gear. I'll cut this end and it should pull apart. Then I'll measure it and I'll go down and cut that end. And then I'll measure the plug that I'm going to put in, cut that to size. They only have a short window without trains to work in. Alone in the middle of nowhere, they have to work quickly, but also precisely. An error of even a couple of millimetres could be disastrous. 
back at Scott's crew, using only the dim lights of their truck, they're set for a crucial lift. To test the tension of the rail, they'll have to carefully raise it. You grab this machine and jacks it up. This section alone weighs close to two tonnes. All right. Going up. As Scott pumps, the track starts to rise. But something's wrong. That's f The hydraulic machine's not lifting properly. This is bullshit. Pack it up. I've had enough of this. After a night of setbacks, it's the last straw. Busted hydraulic pumps and uh, no lights. We're going to call it a night and I'll get someone out here to fix it all up for us. The track's tension level is still unknown. Scott won't be satisfied until the job's done. He'll be back in the morning, before the next trains are due. Bernie Baker's in the cabin of his favourite train, but that's about the only thing giving him joy at the moment. He's waiting to shunt into a siding to start loading wheat but he can't move until his colleague Anthony sets the points using an antiquated and complicated set of levers. That main branch I've got. Um, I'm still trying to get that number nine closing lever. Well, you're not going to get number nine closing lever because you've got the key out for the C-frame, haven't you? Bernie's starting to worry about his tight schedule. So stick it in, throw all those frames back. He needs this fixed now. That's it. Now pull 11. Right. Now your road come over for the loop. Yep. Because everything's so antiquated and, um, you know, primitive levers and big old-fashioned keys and stuff. That's the trouble. We're trying to ride, you know, bigger modern trains, but we're still working on steam here infrastructure. Eventually, all the tracks are set. to the loop and to bring you to the siding so you like to sit back. Roger that, mate. It's all basically got to be done in a, in a precise order in order for the, um, the points to activate, so it can be a bit of a challenge. Now, Bernie's train can slide into the grain loading facility. They have four hours. Uh, Bernie, you're right to go ahead. Uh, good four wagons when you're ready, thanks. And 19 wagons to fill. Red light. One by one. Time for lunch. Oh, oh, way cool tucker for today. Oh, look at that. And another serving of nostalgia for Bernie. So you don't need a fancy burner cooktop and an oven like you got at home. We cook bacon and eggs and hot dogs and spaghetti bolognese. Hell, you can deep fry on it. You'd be amazed at what can be cooked on a single hot plate. Matter of fact, I think I'll bring out a book. Cooking for locomotive crews. Mmm. They tell me charcoal's good for your teeth. I hope so. Nowadays, Bernie has to watch what he eats. 24 years ago, while trying to photograph a train, he climbed what he thought was a telegraph pole. So I got up near the top and ready to jump on the two-piece and stuck my neck up through the wires and got 6,000 volts through the neck and... Uh, a couple of months in a coma and woke up one sock too many. Bernie lost a leg. He eventually recovered. The doctors told me that it was just basically the internal fortitude or intestinal fortitude, call it what you like, that I came out of the coma and survived and got on with it. But not long after, another health problem cropped up. It was suspected epilepsy. So straight away, you know, like you were yanked off the road, you were, you were yanked out of the driver's seat. For a train lover like Bernie, it was devastating. Yeah, I was a mess, you know, like an emotional wreck. Ten long years went by. Ten years of, like, just agonising pain because I couldn't do what I loved doing. Then, finally, he was given the all clear to drive trains again. And you couldn't wipe the smile off my face. I thought, oh, wow, you know, I'm, I'm here. I'm back at the loco. But if anything, 
it, it made me stronger. Bernie's lunch break bliss is interrupted by the sound of bells. Coffee's going on. There are no moving trains around, but the crossing gates have come down. The traffic is starting to back up. Well, the crossing's going off. I don't know why. We're in the signing, we're not even on the circuit yet. It looks like it's going to be Bernie's problem to fix. In the Tasmanian wilderness. Oh, you bastard. Hard centred. Troy and Ali's steam loco had to stop for water, but it can't get moving again. The metal arms that turn the wheels are stuck in no man's land. Dead centre. Like a bicycle pedal that's pushed all the way down without any momentum to keep it moving. The return cranks are seated. You can't move forward, you have to roll backwards. The answer is to roll the wheels backwards, repositioning the rods so they can push forwards. You right, Ali? It's a good trick for a trainee driver like Ali to know. Her theory exam is due in a few weeks, but there's no better place to learn than on the job. But straight away, there's a new problem. The train's losing traction. Ali needs to react quickly to keep the train's momentum. She activates the train's anti-slip mechanism, sand. Slaying a bit of sand down on the track, get a bit of uh, traction. They're in the most remote section, away from roads and away from help. Thick forest on either side. Both fireman and driver have to concentrate hard on the line ahead. And it's trainee Ali who spots it first. Something has fallen across the tracks. A little branch, but it's enough to make a difference. All right, Ali, I'll get up. Even a branch this size is not worth the risk. Oh, that size we could probably run over. Anything bigger than that, we're definitely going to stop. There's a huge drop-off right next to the track. It's no place to take chances. You right, Nelly? Hey, mate. It's their third non-scheduled stop, and this one causes more trouble. We dropped a hose somewhere. An air hose has come loose. As a safety measure, the brakes automatically lock on. Until it's fixed, they're stuck. There's a traffic jam in the country town where Bernie Baker is filling his train with wheat. We're trying Cairnsville. It's a small farming town that's been cut in half by a signal malfunction. Bernie's hoping the solution is a simple push of a button. But it's not. Yeah, we can't cancel a crossing for some strange reason. It's going to make all the locals happy, isn't it? Bernie and his driving partner, Anthony, are already half an hour behind schedule. Yay, great. But the situation at the crossing is getting worse. Even small towns have peak hours. Bernie's attempt to fix it manually has failed. There's only one thing left to do. Interrupt the loading, roll the train through the crossing and back again in the hope that it cancels the bells and gates. Righto, Anthony, I'm gonna red light here, then um, I'll set back again, see what happens. Okay. <laughs> We'll see if it's going to work. We'll soon know if it works when we clear the crossing, hopefully. Fail on that, the electrician will have to come out of his house and come and have a look at it, won't he? 
Oh, look at all those cars. Wouldn't you like to be a fly in the wall in some of those cars? Finally, it's fixed, thanks to Bernie. A little bit of a delay to traffic, but we eventually sorted it. But not everyone's happy. Bernie and Anthony need to return to the loading and get it done quickly so they don't lose their time slot for the return journey. All done, Dave? All done, so that's the last one. That's the last one. Yeah, all right, let's, uh, let's get out of here. We're all done. Yes! It's a short trip back home to Dubbo. But it can't last long enough for Bernie at the controls of his favourite train. When I get to drive one of these, it just takes me right back. <laughs> right back to another time. You know, it's like being in a time machine. It's been an adventure. So today's been testing, you know, we've had to lock away for two trains, track machines. We had level crossing issues. The cream on today's cake was the fact that the B61 was on it, the Bernie Baker. Well. <laughs> it's a day when all the hard work was worthwhile. We have time for tea. <laughs> In the wilds of Tasmania, the brakes are locked on the wheels of Ali and Troy's locomotive. Troy's has gone back to see which hoses come undone. I'm not liking this edge. An air pipe has come loose, bringing the brakes on. I reckon it's the back one. Uh, brakes are on. Can't get them to release. Can't go until we find where the problem is. The one there is on, so got to go back for it. The passengers just have to sit tight and hope it doesn't take too long. Uh, it's right here. Uh, the hose has come apart between the two carriages. So what it does, brings the brake on. Can't get it to go until we put it back together. With the hose reattached, the train heads off to the halfway mark of its journey. The loco will be turned around so it can pull the train from the other end. Just uh, uncoupling the locomotive from the train and uh, getting ready to move off so we can turn around on the turntable, do our servicing. That means some muscle work for Ali and Troy. With her exams only a few weeks away, Ali needs her hours up as a driver. So Troy hands over the controls for the journey back. Do you want to have a drive, Ali? I'll do it with Ali. <laughs> got great faith in her. I've just got to reacquaint myself with number five. We'll give her a run, see how she goes. The loco's been misbehaving the whole way. But seems to respond to a woman's touch. Listen to that. Beautiful. Beautiful. The run home is spectacular, without a hint of trouble. A reminder to Ali why she's working so hard to become a fully fledged driver. She'll take her under her wings, she should be an awesome driver. <laughs> Every day is a great day out here. Some days are just better than others.
In the dead of night, on a remote section of track, it's time for some fireworks. A rail repair team is firing up a thermic weld. Soon, molten metal is filling the gap in the track. Yeah, it looks perfect so far. After it's cooled, the excess metal is crowbarred off. All there is left to do is tidy up the joint. Across a 2,000 kilometre stretch, crews are packing up. With daylight coming, trains need to start rolling. But there's one job outstanding. After malfunctioning equipment and failed lights, Scott O'Brien and his team are back to complete their stress testing. Yeah, we've uh, changed the pump and we've got a new battery for this. So we're hoping it all works. It's the moment of truth. Yeah, the reading on the gauge. This time, their tension gauge is finally working. So you've got the gauge to lift it now, though, mate. 1.6. We're all good to go. Everything's working all right now, so... Uh... Yeah, full steam ahead, everything's going to clean now. The track tension is good. Job done. Pack all the tools up and we move on to the next one. With the maintenance crews finished, up and down the length of the east-west line, trains are rolling again. Pounding over newly repaired and tested rail. Life on Australia's longest line continues. Across the vast continent of Australia, there's always a train running. Freighters longer than an airport runway. Others just a couple of carriages. All doing the same job conquering incredible distances and impossible terrain. Delivering millions of tonnes of freight and mining riches, or just a handful of passengers. At the controls, dedicated men and women who live for their job. And things can go wrong. That's why we've got to be on our game. Well, hopefully we get there in two and a half days. There's not many people out here, that's for sure. And on the tracks... It'll be all guns blazing shortly. ..the teams that operate 24-7 to keep them safe. Working together... <laughs> ..to ensure the great railroads of Australia are running. <laughs>